I don't have to tell anyone in this room, because you study it, that the concept of diversity is one that has become increasingly broadened and elastic, sometimes and in some ways more precise, in many cases less precise. So each of these individuals have contributed chapters to that book, and I wanted to uh, give you a chance to hear them talk about their research. So in the chapter, what I do is address the larger conversation in the HBCU community about how to go about joining the diversity trend in higher education. And I point out some of the themes in that literature. And one of the themes is that HBCUs are somehow late to the conversation, that HBCUs are behind the trend of diversity. And so the conversation then that I bring up, or the point that I bring up, is the fact that we have not yet diversified our definitions of what legitimacy constitutes, and legitimacy is still based on a model of predominantly white institutions that leaves HBCUs at this um, crisis of legitimacy and figuring out what to do as a, in terms of next steps. The question that I'm posing in my chapter is, what might we be able to better understand about racial diversity and any form of diversity in on-college campuses through a spatial lens or a spatial perspective? Um, so what would a lens and a language of space enable us to examine more deeply and to speak, at, speak about more articulately and then to also address? So what kind of changes can be made to space in order to change the types of interactions that are possible? And so when we dig deeper into trying to understand why student athletes appear to be disengaged, much of it is from their perspective is the structural barriers and challenges that are inherent in the belief system of those they have to interact with. And then we have structural challenges. And so here this student is talking about the desire to want to be fully engaged in the learning in the classroom, but feel uncomfortable because if they get it right, it's the, it's the athlete showing off again. They get it wrong, oh, He's reinforced or she's reinforced the dumb athlete perspective. So the particular chapter looked at what promotes students taking advanced algebra in the eighth grade, which is still a gateway to going to college for students in the U.S. And then we also looked at degree aspirations in the, um, in the tenth grade. And I think what's the connection for this particular project to the book is the people that actually contributed to making this chapter possible are disproportionately first-generation undergrad and graduate students. Um, they are all month multilingual for the most part. Um, many of them have a recent immigrant experience. Um, and so it's this very, very diverse team of people that have made this work possible. The chapter is an excerpt from my study where I interviewed uh, 13 female faculty members at public two-year colleges, seven male faculty members at two-year colleges, six two-year public two-year colleges in a particular metro area, looking at their race-related role stressors. So I used uh, critical race theory, racial battle fatigue, role strain, and again, racial micro and macro aggressions. And so the results of that study gave me some ideas on how to handle my spaces or to, to an extent to at least understand what's happening when a microaggression happens, when a macroaggression happens, what are the psycholog psychological, physiological, and behavioral expressions am I dealing with when those things happen, and how do I begin to think about that? I want to thank my panelists. Thank you for your generous answers and your willingness to take on my questions.